The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. So, weeding, Holly, it is a problem that we all face. Now, there's like 1%, a uh, fraction of a percent, in my <clears throat> estimation, of gardeners who don't deal with weeds. And that is on a couple of factors. One, they don't care. Or two, their garden is in containers. Or three, they have got it so pristine in using tools and or decades of pure uh, uh, purging the ground of garden of weed seeds that they don't have weeds. Yeah, that's. But that's only less than a percent. That's right, what. That's, that's my ratio. Yeah, and unless yeah, unless you. Um, and a more power to you. You'd have to spend a lot of time. And there know, are people that, yeah. that we, we, you know, Joe Lample, host of PBS, The Growing Green World, he's interviewed people that do such that. They have no weeds. They weed five minutes a week and they're done, which is great, wonderful. But all of us, for the most of us, Holly, we don't have that luxury, um, whatever you want to call it. I mean, if we put the work into it, you know, I'm sure it right. could be. It's, but it's, a, it's more common to have weeds than not yes. basically and that's okay it's i guess uh you're not alone type of thing so one thing is that if you can try to avoid having weeds one thing is tilling and i know this is a very controversial topic but if you till your garden you are chopping up the weeds roots the roots and then you are propagating more weeds essentially and we're not shaming you for tilling we get the appeal um, and whatnot, but for us, we don't till, but we still have weeds, so right. I guess that doesn't mean anything. Now there is, but you can increase. Right now, yeah. there is some. The the is it okay to till? Well, whenever you know you have all the weeds extracted from the garden, if you've gone through with a garden fork and removed the roots and all of that, then you can till. But there's no point of tilling because you've already tilled the soil essentially by using the garden fork to remove all the particles of roots, and many of these roots are aggressive and will propagate from very fine fragments of roots that are left in the ground absolutely and that's something that you want to keep in mind no matter what kind of gardening you do you likely will end up with weeds it's just a matter of the amount so another thing you can do is you can mulch mulching is um, beneficial for your garden for many reasons one it does help suppress the weeds now it it doesn't mean that your garden is going to be weed free but it will suppress some of the weeds especially the smaller ones that are more weak Strong, aggressive weeds are going to do what they need to do. Well, here's the example. In the fall, we put leaves in our raised beds. We don't cover them thoroughly. We just, in a quick motion, dump a bunch of leaves that we get from the street and the property on the bed. The beds that we don't cover, when we get to the garden, because there's no sense of working the garden when it's frozen, um, and when that soil warms, those weeds shoot up. In the beds that have leaves, very few, almost to no weeds, and I mean, we're talking six, eight inches of leaves, the places where there is no leaves, the plants are six, eight, the weeds are six, eight, ten inches tall very, very rapidly. Absolutely. So that's why mulching is beneficial for weeds. Also helps um, keep keep the moisture in the soil. And it covers it. And it covers it. Yep. And that's what's important. Um, and also can help kind of regulate the temperature. Well, what of kind of mulch would you recommend? I would use, if you can't have access to leaves, I would just use straw. And people are concerned with what is sprayed on the straw. Is it a herbicide or a pesticide? Well, usually or, it's or, like oats. Well, now, see, growing up on the farm, we never sprayed wheat. We never did. We, we planted it in October and we harvested it in late June, early July, and, and we never sprayed a thing on it. Now I'm understanding uh, that they every year they come in with a helicopter or an airplane if it's too wet or they bring sprayers in. They spray something because there's another bug that's invest, in, infested in the wheat that could damage and eat the, and they got to kill it. So there's a whole theory on why I think that exists. Um, but you'd have to check the supplier. Go to the local farmer. Hey, I'd like to buy some wheat straw, oat straw, barley straw. Can I? One, how much is it? Two, and well, I guess the first question is, do you spray anything on it? Because here's my intended purpose for it. Right. And yeah, you want to to make sure you have an education about what's going on with the straw and what could you could be putting it's into It's good your that you ask. Garden. Now we want you don't want to use hay though, right? No. Hay has hay is the grasses that is cut for feed for cattle, livestock, horses, goats, any of that. That contains a lot of weed seed, so you're going to be introducing weeds into your garden if you use hay. Straw is the stalk of the plant, which even if it's the stalk, there may become may 
retain some grains in those bales, but also may a few weed seeds, but very minimal. And those are easy to extract if distributed in your garden. Right. So, yeah. So one thing is using mulch. And then if you want to use something um, like some people will use a natural weed spray if you have aggressive weeds not necessarily in your garden nat green maybe, zero yeah nat green zero maybe around your garden uh um, you nat green zero has an uh natural weed killer go to natgreen.com and use coupon code uh ship uh was it no ship for me um let's yeah, uh, free ship for me. Free ship, oh, free ship the number, number four, four for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, if, and if we run over coupon codes that you're not able to capture, our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, has all of them listed under the money tab at the top of the page. Right. So then you can also um, you can also spray something like Nat Green Zero, and then you want to hand weed. And the biggest thing is that if you hand weed when they're small. You usually don't have big weeds or you have your few big weeds. Unlike us. Unlike like us. We, yeah, we always like show up to the garden. It's like, bam, weeds all the pla- over the place. Um, so don't, don't do as we do. Do as we say, I guess. Well, we, we weeded. Yeah, we weeded. We, we did. weeded all the beds. Yeah. But weeds were anywhere from one inch to one foot tall. Right. And we got them all through in the compost and pile. And it was mostly just like grass. It was grass. Yeah. 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 It was grass. And then if you are going to weed something like a big thistle, make sure you wear gloves. Don't hurt yourself doing that. And make sure you try to pull it out as best as possible. Or if you have like a garden fork, you could kind of pluck it out that way too. And the best time to weed is when the soil is semi-dry or almost completely dry. The, the dirt falls or the soil falls off the roots. Don't get in there and try to weed after you've had three inches of rain. It's not going to work. You're gonna uh, Most of the soil is going to stick to the roots. You're going to get covered in mud. It's not a fun experience whatsoever. So try to time that out because regardless of how much water you put on your garden, your tomatoes, your peppers, your eggplants, those weeds are going to outgrow them no matter how dry they are. The drier the soil, it doesn't matter. The weeds are very aggressive. They're going to sustain life and, and try to choke out what you're trying to grow. Right. Another another thing you can do is you can retain, you can rema- re- re- maintain the garden edges. Okay. So a lot of weeds will pop up on the edges just because they creep kinda, in. They creep in, yep. And so if you have... This won't happen in raised beds because the, it'll just be the grass. Well, basically. yeah, sometimes the grass will creep over and then grow up yeah. eight, eight, ten inches to the compost. So if you keep the edges clear, then maybe you will have less weeding in the middle, hopefully. Um, it just depends. Like, we have Creeping Charlie, uh-huh. and I don't think I've seen that much in the garden beds. No, itself, uh, no. but if you have aggressive plants such as Jerusalem artichokes or raspberries or blackberries that shoot off runners and uh, multiply... Uh, multifold each year they can come in the beds or they can go out of the beds so that's a good problem to have because these plants these let's say raspberries you're looking at about 12 15 dollars a plant so if you've got 10 or 12 of them popping up on its own let them be and uh, enjoy that free uh, cash flow in your garden and you yes. could just um a couple of years ago this big thistle downstairs by uh-huh. our door grew and then i think my neighbor put a, a christmas ornament on uh-huh. it because it was like the size of a christmas tree right. so you can just add the weeds to your landscape yeah. well weeds we, we've removed we've not weeded at some points and and aphids have attached themselves to lamb's quarters yeah. and instead and use that as a host plant instead of the intended plants in which we were growing mm-hmm. so that is also a way in which if you're a little uh, behind the behind on time, or you leave some there, some we as some bugs will attach themselves to those weeds. Um, so that that's another way. And introducing beneficial insects into your garden, and that's not necessarily going online and buying a bunch of ladybugs or praying mantis eggs in the spring or anything like that. Just keeping a healthy pest ecosystem, fr- ecosystem yeah. pest free environment. And yes, you're going to have bad bugs, and you're going to have good bugs. And in the perfect prairie world, or in the woods, there, there's not gnomes dro- growing or uh, walking around spraying and shooting bad bugs. It, it naturally balances out. Right. Yeah. And natural. I don't think gnomes would shoot bugs. <laughs> I don't think that's the type of personality a gnome would have. Maybe the ones that, that guard the bridge. Maybe there's all there's just a natural. 
um, balance. Balance, yep. And, you know, if you feel bad about your weeds, don't. Uh, remind yourself that everybody has weeds. And if you see your neighbor, maybe you, you don't think they have any weeds. I'm sure they got weeds somewhere. If they don't have weeds in their garden, they got problems in other parts of their life. They probably, no. <laughs> Yeah, they're yeah. probably honestly yeah. spraying it with something. Well, yeah, yeah. And and we talked to a garden many a gardener many years ago, and what he did would he is he lets the weeds grow, and then at the end of the year he saved the seeds from the tomatoes, the eggplants, the squashes that survive, because that had a stronger gene pool in those seeds because they outgrew and outcompeted the weeds, and then he would plant them the next year to get a stronger strain naturally of the of the plants. Yeah. So, so there you go. You're like using this garden science something. Nature. Nature. Uh, ecosystem. Fighting fighting things. I don't know. So well, we talked kind of about thing. the money tab, Holly, on our on our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, and that's where you can find the coupon code for Waltons Inc. dot com, where they have everything but the meat. As we're getting into butchering and hunting season and even fishing now, they have a little bit for everybody. They do have a little bit for everything. Even the vegans. Have, and they, exactly. Yeah, if you, most vegans eat potatoes. Yes. So if you want to sprinkle some of these seasonings on your potatoes, like we had some baked potatoes for, for dinner the other day, and you put some, what did you put on there, some potato thing? Yeah, it's, I forget, the potato uh, mix that they yeah. have. It's really good. And they use Excalibur spices, which are the professional um, quality ones. So they It's the those. good ones. Yep. And then if you go to meatjustics.com, they have a educational site to help people learn the hows and whys of meat processing and there's a community of 15,000 users who give their opinion and guidance on meat processing issues. They have everything from meat grinders, sausage stuffers, uh, mixers, anything but the meat and they go from animal to edible the best way and you can go to waltonsinc.com or meatjustics.com. At waltonsinc.com, you can use code GROW50, GROW50, to save 10% off your orders of $50 or more. If you have a way that you control weeds, we'd like to hear about it at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That was just a small snippet of some of the ways you can weed your garden. For more information, please visit the wisconsinvegetablegardener.com.